with solid tumors overall, till therapy is being explored across the greater, I, I would say the broadest group of solid tumors. I think it's fair to say that that is in the most advanced stages, a number of um, phase two studies ongoing um, from different um, uh, uh, biotech stroke pharmaceutical companies and also larger pharma companies buying out products developed by smaller biotech firms. As you might expect, um, from a TIL therapy perspective, these are being explored mainly in uh, amongst solid tumours that are seen to be immunogenic. And the reason is that, or the idea is you're most likely to isolate TILs from tumours that are immunogenic. Even if these are these therapies are being explored in the context of patients that might be refractory to immunotherapy approaches, and so what you will have seen, um, and we've had this data for a long time, obviously in advanced melanoma, but we have data with response rates of fifty to eighty percent uh, in patients before checkpoint inhibitors came on the scene with TIL therapy, which is sort of remarkable. But small numbers again it needs to be uh, need to justify that. But beyond melanoma. We, we or, or still with melanoma, I would say we're seeing more trials open in that immunotherapy refractory space. So for patients that uh, develop or acquire resistance or have intrinsic resistance to checkpoint inhibition, uh, is there a role for TIL therapy? And it really does look like there is. And I mentioned uh, data from Ivan's Biotherapeutics with a response rate of, of near to 38, around 38% in patients that are and um, primary refractory or refractory to anti PD one based approaches, which is kind of remarkable because that is a really tough space. That's a setting in which we normally tell our patients they have short months to live. Um, so that's remarkable. And the median of duration of response not yet reached. So in terms of other immunogenic, as I mentioned, solid tumors, non-small cell lung cancer, and primarily, not primarily, but you know, you would expect large, most often in patients that are, uh, have, a, have developed uh, lung can non-small cell lung cancer on a background of tobacco smoke. Um, so, so those patients, and you see trials in the sort of refractory setting, but also as mentioned earlier in the um, immunotherapy naive setting. And that's because in the lung cancer world, possibly, obviously following the data from randomized clinical trials, um, but also acknowledging how uh, that their patient population are fairly poorly, they're very strict about um, who qualifies for uh, immunotherapeutic approaches, um, and only really their fittest patients and all of those with um, P uh, PDL1 expression or biomine histochemistry are able to access uh, checkpoint inhibitor therapy. So, trying to expand the reach of immunotherapy through TIL therapy in, in those group of patients would be interesting. Um, and then in head and neck cancers, again, normally, which have arisen either on a background of sort of smoking and alcohol and as such have a background of high tumor mutational burden most often, um, and therefore would be potentially immunogenic. So in that group of patients, but also increasingly in a, in a modern day or contemporary group of patients, there's an increasing incidence of HPV related head and neck cancers, you know, and those obviously are, uh, um, you know, viral mediated cancers. You have the potential to come in with immunotherapy, that there's potential utility of immunotherapeutic approaches in that space. So, I think head and neck cancer, lung cancer, melanoma for TIL therapy are furthest ahead. Um, there was a um, there was a paper at a recent ESMO meeting um, about the successful isolation or harvest of TILs from multiple different tumor types, and I can believe that uh, absolutely. I can believe that having had first hand experience of doing that. You know, the question will be of those TILs that you've isolated, how many of them are going to be useful? when you expand them up and go on to have useful or, or bona fide anti-tumor activity, and that will be an unknown. Interestingly, from in the TCR space, where you where you have your off-the-shelf off the product and you, you're directing against a specific target, I think what will be really interesting there, and maybe this will feed into the CAR T-cell space too, is, is where you have tumor subtypes that aren't traditionally immunogenic based on their um, genetic landscape, um, but they do for whatever reason or another, have high expression of a, a particular target like NYSO1 and synovial sarcoma. So, you know, it's not, it's not recognized as an immunogenic tumor type, but if it reliably expresses high levels of uh, a given target antigen, then maybe we can start transforming uh, tumor subtypes that we never necessarily 
expected to be transformed by immunotherapy, at least not by checkpoint inhibition. Um, but we could we could use our those targets as anchors for our um, CAR T cell therapy, stroke TCR therapies, and that will be great to see you know tumor subtypes transformed potentially um, that would never. Uh, traditionally benefit from checkpoint inhibition. And as I said, NYSO1 expression in synovial sarcoma would be an example of that. As I said, CAR T cell therapy, um, mainly beyond the local or intrapleural delivery of mesothelium and fat, there have been approaches um, in neuroblastoma against GD2, um, against EGFR in glioblastoma, um, against HER2 and synovial sarcoma and breast. But I think it's definitely fair to say it's early days there. Um, and we have to keep watching that space. So uh, I think that's a reasonable summary of, of more broadly where we are from a solid tumor perspective.